20th day already. April 2023. I hope you're doing well. And this Thursday, last show of the week, day five. Always takes me a few minutes to get up and running. I'm Dana Durnford. I'm also known as the nuclearproctologist.org. You can call in 709-589-4406. <clears throat> we got two people on our show. <laughs> uh, which is good. Awesome. Should geothermal energy that actually exists be considered before non-existent small modular reactors? Should geothermal energy that actually exists, because we actually have it, right? <clears throat> be considered before non-existent small modular reactors because everybody's signing memorandums of understandings to exclude everything but small modular reactors which actually don't even exist. Welcome to the crazy world of nuclear. <clears throat> Speaking of crazies, what are they going to do about the IAEA? They're going to kill everything on this planet. What the hell are these creatures? We should get DNA samples to make sure they're actual humans. Speaking of DNA samples to figure out if they're actual humans, James Hansen is back at it again. Japan never stops, of course. Uh, it was a tough day today. I was sick for four and a half hours. I had to watch that. This was the Nuclear Energy Forum in conjunction with the G7 ministers meeting in Japan. So the, the nuclear industry took over the G7. Or maybe that's the way it was supposed to be, right? the hell is that noise in the background? Oh, that's music, Dana. It's almost over. Might as well let it finish playing it, I suppose. I screwed up that much. I left him a comment anyway. Um, so it was really interesting to see all these nuclear terrorists together in one place. Uh, when I went over to the site, they only had one video. That was the video that they posted a couple of days ago. Four and a half hours with three hours and 45 minutes was them actually talking. And so we got a couple of clips of that. You might get a few ha-ha's out of. <laughs> actually, I know you will. Let's start off with Jennifer Grahamhole. <sighs> My goodness, what a creature, right? Uh, thank you to uh, the Japan Atomic Industrial um, Forum and, of course, to the Nuclear Energy Institute for pulling this together. This is the first G7 industry forum ever, and the subject is nuclear. So you got to love that because it means that there's a real seriousness of purpose among the G7 or five of the G7 uh, to focus on nuclear and this clean energy technology. Cheap, right <laughs> just clean energy technology what is whoever wrote that for should be fired <clears throat> it was this clip that made me laugh and uh, we in the United States, we have a goal, of course, like everybody, of getting to net zero by 2050. For us, it means that we have to add 300 gigawatts of nuclear to get to our net zero goal. 300 <laughs> gigawatts. <laughs> and we're not alone. Obviously, the other members of the uh, G5, I'll call them, um, are also have similar high ambitions. So we've got to get there, and we've got to get there quick. <clears throat> Let's talk about that for a second. So America's got to build 300 reactors by 2050. It took them 44 years to get their last reactor online, Watts Bar 2. And they had to shut it off uh, a couple years later and replace a huge bunch of equipment because 
and that's nuclear. So she's saying that the United States is going to build 300 nuclear reactors. Like, what is she talking about? And that all these other countries got to build similar? Um, COSAC, which is uh, the Nuclear Energy Institute, I can't remember, there's so many of these people these days, said that they got to build thousands of reactors by 2050. So look, what the hell are they talking about? It's, ab it's absurd to suggest they don't have, even though five countries have signed another memorandum of understandings, that's all we see in the nuclear industry. That's all they do, sign memorandums, uh, memorandums of understanding. We don't see anything come to fruition, right? There's zero possibility they're going to build 300 reactors in the United States. And they talk about how they got to keep every single reactor worldwide running at all costs. It was That was really interesting. There was a lot of these speakers. We got the British. My poll was up for almost two hours before I got a single vote. Look at cheers with government marked in the back of them. <laughs> My God, eh? Okay, so this was the end of it, and they bring up the British Minister for Zero Carbon and Climate Change from the United Kingdom. And Tom, thank you to you for a great job moderating a wonderful panel. With that, it's my distinct honor to welcome to the stage Secretary of State Schaps. Uh, he is the Secretary of State for Energy Security and Net Zero in the UK. Mr. Mr. Schaps, we'd love to hear from you. Okay, so I went to the end of his speech because I'm still in shock by what he said. But I want to end by quoting the world's most famous nuclear power plant worker, Homer Simpson. TV's Homer Simpson, you know the guy I'm talking, yellow bloke, right? Oh. Homer liked to say, Homer Simpson liked to say that he was on a mission for fission. And colleagues, so are we. Thank you very much. And then he left his assistant to pick up all the luggage. He got the shit out of there after saying something so ridiculous. And so my heart goes out to everybody in the United Kingdom. I know how humiliating that must be for them. He's the minister of nuclear. Now, they got, no, he appointed a couple of days ago a minister for nuclear. So Britain is the first country in the entire planet with a minister for nuclear. Uh, Great British Nuclear uh, was his little charmer that he... And uh, he actually mentioned uh, the British United Kingdom uh, Nuclear Power Plant Decommission Authority, and they've never decommissioned anything. He said they'll get to uh, Donneray in about 315 years. But to mention Homer Simpson, to mention Homer Simpson, man. And so I was listening to all of the, I could do a couple of shows on all of these guys. And I could do a couple of shows definitely on these guys. At Framatone, you had uh, New Scale, you had Hitachi, S what? Very disappointing. <coughs> These were perpetual lawyers, right? You had uh, Kozak. She got enough gold on her, and I was surprised she didn't get mugged. Money's good, being a scumbag, apparently. And, of course, we showed you a clip from this whack job. 300, 300 nuclear power plants. You had uh, France, Mitsubishi. So all of these people there were... Uh, 
to swear allegiance to Canadian Nuclear Association. You had uh, Sama Babo uh, Leon. She's the head of World Nuclear Association. You said uh, the perp walk was quite interesting, to say the least. Uh, so 300 nuclear power plants just in America. You better get busy. I say if, if you gave them all the money they could ever want, they still couldn't build 20. And I'm being extremely genuous to suggest they can build 20 by 2050. So what the hell are they up to? They know this is not going to come to fruition. And they got five countries who are going to work together but the five countries are the complete nuclear, dis the very, uh, the poster child of nuclear dysfunction, right? Renowned climate scumbag James Hansen, what sh do you wish to do to stop warming and help others? Of course, you know what he's going to do is promote nuclear, right? He posed, he was uh, to help the planet, the creeper says. Sits for a portrait in his home. He's sitting in a very, very expensive couch. <coughs> Taiwan gave him uh, the equivalent of the Nobel Prize because he promoted nuclear, right? And it was something like uh, $1.4 million cash. He flew down to pick it up. And that was when Hang was on a food strike trying to get uh, importing Fukushima food into Taiwan on the ballot for 2018 referendum. We covered it for six days straight. That was quite the circus, eh? All this, all the lies and headlines. That was really something. And so the population voted, 72% voted not to import food from the nuclear wasteland. The Nuclear Institute, the nuclear universities were out in full force for about a whole week before the vote, was, uh, you know, the referendum. It was attached to uh, another referendums. <coughs> um, And so, one guy in particular who organized it all, Hang, he had a, uh, how shall I put it, he had, he had faked a food, a hunger strike, right, to get it on the pole. He got on the pole, Larry. Right? They had a lot of help with uh, the Americans, like uh, Michael Schellenberg and, and Forbes and other organizations. Uh, depending on emissions, now, Hansen is the guy who came up with the fable of the carbon was trapping the heat. Car carbon only travels about 50 or 100 miles away from the source. And carbon is wicked good for uh, plants and trees and bushes and, you know, life, right? You can't have any life. If you've got no carbon, it would be like the moon. But nuclear, the plumes from nuclear, they cover the entire planet. Let me give you an example because just in case you're somebody who don't know much about the topic, it could happen. And so this is one of the many, many different models of radioactive fallout. They're talking about in the Neptunium-239. It's a 400-year half-life. It's so a 4,000 year lifespan or something, but it decays to other isotopes each time, each half-life, and there's 10 half-lives. Theoretically, right, there's a lot more than that, but there's 10, they say, that you gotta worry about. So this is a plume of Neptunium-239, covering the entire planet after 27 days. That's uh, gas, oil, and coal emissions don't create plumes like this. At the same time, you're going to see a model of a plume covering the entire planet is from nuclear accidents. That's what makes him so sadistic is that he claims carbon is what's heating the planet up. But carbon doesn't pulse energy every second for millions of years. Carbon turns into trees and plants and bushes and everything else. Radiation pulses energy for every second. So you can ignore the science and call it carbon all you want, but it's not carbon. 
Hansen, who should be arrested for the rest of his natural life, was in Utah Tuesday for a special event hosted by the Natural Nature Conservancy, Conservancy and Nature Human. Nature History Museum of Utah. I was just trying to think about why was he dear for something like that. It's hard to wrap my mind around. We got political parties, both sides taking money from special interests, he said. No, you got 7,000 lobbyists knocking on your door for each interest. With a suitcase of money to get your vote. What exactly is needed, according to Scumbag Hansen, a fee and dividend system which the price of fossil fuel is raised and to reflect carbon emissions of course the container ships 15 container ships produce more pollution than all the cars on the planet combined and there's 90,000 of them on the ocean at any given time and those dividends from the revenue is then given back to the people so you're going to tax people so they can't afford the gas and then you're going to give it back to them later I, th I think Hansen should be dragged, kicking and screaming to Fukushima because that's the only way you're going to get him there, right? Why well, Hansen says nuclear energy is the answer, but Hansen is a low-life climate scientist. He doesn't know nothing about nuclear. In fact, we've criticized him a hundred times probably. He claims he gets more radiation flying on a plane than you do for living next door to Three Mile Island when it melted down. Which, and um, I can play the clip for you, but I'm not going to. And that's reprehensible. That's, he should lose his degree for saying something like that. They got nothing to do with each other, right? And But he's the guy who originally went to Congress, done a presentation for 15 minutes, and said carbon was going to be global warming. And United Nations took that and weaponized it against the population ever since. But it was Hansen is the reason we're here on Carbon Free and Net Zero, uh, which was the next part of it by Miles Allen's paper that the United Nations took that and then blood used that to bludgeon humanity with. Nuclear energy is the key, the creeper said. How nuclear power, climate scientists says it's time, well, that's what their job is. No matter what's the problem, the solution is going to be nuclear. That's what a climate scientist was created to do. That was the, the whole idea of the word, the genre, climate scientist, was so the solution was always going to be nuclear. And the nuclear action in Fukushima, Japan, amplified the fear, really the fear. This is a catastrophic event for all species after just 20 days. A continuous plume covering the whole planet that never goes away. He said that the NRC, the Non-Regulatory Commission, is designed to kill nuclear power because he wants to remove all restrictions, right? He also calls the worries over nuclear waste storage a big boogaloo. Asserting it's stored safely in dried cast, which is not. It's stored in mostly in pools and in uh, open containers that's vented into the environment. Because it's still splitting the atoms into the environment, and these atoms never go away. Like the fuel pools are doing, right? They like to sequester them in you by surrounding the plants with farms. And it's interesting to call these things plants because you associate plants with food, right? And they're surrounded by farms. Farms suck up the radiation. You buy that food and get sick and die. And waiting to be repurposed for use in next generation nuclear technologies. So now he's talking about mixed oxide fuel. New energy, nuclear energy reactors have the smallest geographic footprint of power energy sources after geothermal. Which, by the way, we got a poll tonight asking that very question. Should geothermal energy that actually exists be considered before non-existent small modular reactors? Well, of course you should. Why wouldn't it? 
Why would somebody vote no? My goodness. New, this, well, first off, small modular reactors don't exist. So why are we considering them? Why are we signing memorandums of understanding? This is probably why I'm censored so, so much tonight. There's a reason every night, because we cover real subjects. The future is our youth, Hansen said. Of course, they target your children like a pedophile targets your children. They're the same thing, right? He believes young people. Hansen wants young people because they don't know any better, see? Hansen, you won't see Hansen handing, hanging out with adults he, when he's doing these protests. He's hanging out with children only. I think he should be convicted for sedition for against his country. And I think NASA should be disbanded because he was in it. That's how evil he actually was. And still is, of course. Should we be wary to plan dumping of Fukushima wastewater into the Pacific? Well, shouldn't you be worried about what's been going on for the last 12 years? Shouldn't you be worried about what's happened already? Instead of worried about what might happen with tritium? Why, why is the word tritium even into the equation? Don't you realize this thing detonated? With decades of reactor cores and the fuel pools that don't exist, but you get all the media to pretending that they do? Try wrapping your mind around what I just said. That's media pretending they're in the fuel pool of the building to the left, reactor four. The stump of it. <coughs> that should horrify you that that is happening. That was a good picture from Taiwan, I think it was, wasn't it? Hang on. Oh, I can't remember where the story originated from. Let's get back at it. What is very disquieting is that there's no precedence in the world or actual practice of discharging such a massive volume of nuclear waste into the sea. And what's even more bothersome and worrisome is that the International Atomic Energy Agency has not opposed Japan's unilateral decision in that regard. Of course, they never went there, United Nations, that we can tell. We don't have any actual proof. I would imagine he went there, but we haven't got any proof they did. Japan to release Fukushima radioactive water into the sea was used for cooling down the melted nuclear fuel. Normally needs a million gallons a minute, 4,500 tons a minute. 4,500 one-ton pickup trucks a minute, every minute, 1,440 minutes a day. Fukushima reborn is a world-class tech hub. In NAMI... And Minamasoma, which are nuclear wastelands, they just open up 10% of NAMI, the rest of it's off limit. So the industry is not sincere about trying to be responsible. It's the complete opposite. It's growing food in the nuclear wasteland. It's about six kilometers away, <laughs> that spot there they're talking about. <coughs> they're going to put the energy tech hub in a nuclear wasteland. They're calling it crippled, but it's actually multiple nuclear meltdowns. You can't call that crippled, see? You call it crippled instead of calling it what it is, a nuclear meltdown, nuclear wasteland. So how can we um, not scrutinize th these people who have this absurd legacy of trying to cover up all the adverse effects of Fukushima, and I mean all of them. Local officials, useless idiots, say more than 70 robotic companies are operating at 21 facilities across NAMI and Minamasoma, which are just a few kilometers away from ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns. And this is just meant to prop up the nuclear industry, again. 
because they can't do anything right, so all they can do is public relations, right? But I mean, NAMI is a nuclear wasteland like Minamasoma. You know, they picked up around a million bags, one ton bags in NAMI of just topsoil. It's been evacuated for 12 years. You just open up 10% of it. How can you only open up 10% of a nuclear wasteland? You can't. It's still melting down right next to it. One of the world's biggest facilities of its kind. Uh, specialist themes range from new medicines in the nuclear industry, of course, is evilness, to the industry's use of radiation, including development of radio pharmaceuticals for cancer examination. This is the very last thing you should be using on your body, by the way, and it's the very last thing you should be doing in a nuclear wasteland. It's, I can't imagine how these people, there's be any of these people that are orchestrating this and funding it and, and in the nuclear industry can actually look in a mirror and consider themselves humans. I can't actually wrap my mind around it. It's like uh, Jennifer Gramholz saying they're going to build 300 nuclear reactors in the United States in the next 17 years. It's just absurdness. Uh, you better get busy. Where are you going to get all the manpower? Where are you going to get all the technology? Where are you going to get all all the cable, for God's sakes? Where are you going to get all this? Like, where are you going to get the equipment? Yeah, five countries just signed on, but they all want to build nuclear themselves. They can't give it to America. They want to do the same things. So now it's like the worst thing they ever done was sign a pack together. Basically a pact for idiots. Studying how radioactive material migrates in the environment. Well, you're into the right spot. An ecosystem. Not that there's any ecosystem left there. The research is turning Fukushima tragic past into a positive for the future. I can't understand people like this. That says stuff like that. That sit there and write stuff like that for a paycheck that are willing to poison everybody so they get a paycheck on Friday. I can't wrap my mind around what kind of human that actually is in real life. <coughs> right? I can't wrap my mind around it. If we can get you a job, you got to be a scumbag for the rest of your life for the nuclear industry. Yes, sign me up. You're going to murder lots of people with lies. Oh, yes, I get a paycheck every Friday. Yeah, I'm in. Does it come with dental? Because I need a lot of my teeth fixed. Yeah, 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 it comes with dental. I'm in. You got to lie to everybody and poison your own children. I'm in. Pick me, me, me. As for the agriculture, the research is finding ways to boost farm production. Again, like, what are you talking about? You're in a nuclear wasteland surrounded by nuclear wastelands. Uh, Kano's house up there, that's a nuclear wasteland. That's yellow, where he just moved back into. That's a fraction of the nuclear wasteland that's just open for 2023. Yellow is what opened for 2023. Red and orange is, no, is a no-go zone for probably ever. See? So they're going to put a, a technology hub right in the center of a nuclear wasteland. And they're writing articles as if this is some... The next best team to slice bread. You just you lose fate, right? And that's the three of them got their pictures. They even put their pictures there. Not even ashamed of themselves. All three of them look at it. They're all proud of themselves for writing such a despicable story. I get. To, I guess they got to get the most out of it, right? So this is how they make them. They pay their mortgages and their children's sports tuitions and university funds and everything by writing a scattered article that ends up murdering everybody because everybody's so complacent, right? Well, it must be true. I, I know her dad. She, she wouldn't lie. Yeah, well, she wouldn't cut your throat because she's a coward, so she'll do it with a pen stroke, and she'll cut your children's throat at the same time. 
Germany, this is Forbes, so it's got the credibility of a rattlesnake. Germany embraces pseudoscience with nuclear phase out. Pseudoscience. And uh, I, I have a really disrespect for Forbes. I, like, it's okay, I actually hate their guts. I have to be honest because I'm, it's pointless for me to lie. When it's coming to nuclear, it's impossible for me to lie. <laughs> That's the sad part. I like to lie and just say stuff for fun, but I can't even do that. And then, you know, I'll tell, tell the truth immediately after, but I, I can't do it. It's nuclear. <coughs> I am an economist focused on regulatory issues. He's a contributor, so his job is to write an article to make nuclear look I'd like to pick on Germany, right? <coughs> it was shaped in the, it took shape in the current form in the aftermath of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. It didn't. It took form in 2003, with the previous administration made that decision. Angela Merkel just reinforced the previous administration's decision. That's all. So you shouldn't be writing if you don't know what you're writing about, or. Particularly if you're just a scumbag, like apparently that guy is, at Forbes. Studies have shown that shutting off nuclear power, this is an M MIT study that we covered a few days back, right, that just came out. And now all the media is using that, saying, well, you can't cut off nuclear, people are going to die. Well, nuclear is a great big stupid disease factory, for goodness sakes. <sighs> No good telling you. I got to show it to you. Because if I just tell you, then I'm not. I'm not doing the best that I can. Oh, to be a, like, can you imagine? That's but their job is to write one or two or three articles a month, <coughs> and they're making five or ten thousand dollars a month, right? And their job is to come out and manipulate you. And poison you and your loved ones in increments for the rest of your life by making you complacent. So why are nuclear power plants surrounded by farms, first off? That's the, probably one of the scariest pictures you're ever going to see is a nuclear power plant. Because when you look in the background or even close to it, it's surrounded by farms. And not all, but pretty well all of them are surrounded by farms and Japan is growing food in the nuclear wastelands surrounded by nuclear wastelands half the country because these are the big prefectures 14 of them are banned by 55 countries and they're growing food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation in the exclusion zone they're mur they're they're trying to kill you. They're, well, anybody that ends up eating it gets sick or dies, right, or both. So they're killing you. That This is on purpose. This is extermination. There's the proof. They're growing food in a no-go zone alongside a one-ton bags of radiation. That's quite an old picture, by the way, unfortunately. And they're in a nuclear wasteland. It's time to wake up and smell the death. How can anybody ignore that picture? How can anybody pretend that that is not going to eventually affect them? By the way, this is a 19 and a half day model in the bottom right hand corner. Right here is 19.5 days, 468 hours of radioactive fallout covering the whole planet. All the oceans, the whole planet. The plume doesn't stop, it's a continuous plume by the way. And when you look at the reactors that made the plume, there's nothing left. So the plume is a threat to humanity that is now carrying to all species, not just humans. In a time when Europe is grappling with high energy prices caused by Russia's war in Ukraine, well, no, it's not caused by that. It's caused because Ukraine and 195 countries a lot of them were in the EU, rather. 
195 countries have signed on to this corporation, this think tank known as United Nations, that have taken over your planet. Uh, they, they all at the same time put sanctions against Russia. They had no way of replacing the commodities they were sanctioning, which caused immediate inflation in all of these countries without the consent of the people in the countries, without no referendums or votes or no debate in the media or parliaments or Congress or diets or anywhere else. So everybody went to a UN meeting, made a decision that you should suffer and pay all this extra money for all your food, all your resources, everything, for your gas, your oil, the whole nine yards, and bankrupt you, destroy millions of little businesses because they had a beef with Russia. Now, at the same time as Russia allegedly went to war, NATO was already in a proxy war with Russia and continued that by funding and supplying Ukraine instead of fighting Russia directly. So you couldn't replace the commodities to put a inflation, a sanction against, which created immediate inflation. And, and so when they decided to do it, I actually done a video, like tonight, I'd done a video to break down what happened that day, was that the United Nations had ordered 195 countries that they had no sovereignty over whatsoever to impose sanctions without trying to come up with solutions first. The, it's disgusting, despicable, horrific betrayal against humanity is what happened. And it's never too late to hold them accountable for what they've done. Countries like Canada take a different approach, investing in new nuclear technology uh, to develop small modular reactors that don't exist. Like, w why would you use geothermal that already exists? Why would you use small modular reactors? Should geothermal energy that actually exists be considered before non-existent small modular reactors. So geothermal will put out easily the same energy for half the price with none of the adverse side effects. You don't need expensive security. You don't need deep geological repositories. Yeah, it sounds pretty stupid, I'm sure, but it actually would be better, trust me. Of course, the near, near catastrophe, Fukushima wasn't a near catastrophe, Fukushima was a catastrophe. To say it's a near catastrophe when it covered the planet in brutal, thick, radioactive fallout forever that never goes away. To call it a near catastrophe is really something, isn't it? Then they do the same thing for Chernobyl. Then they say experts, let's not name any of them, of course, agree that nuclear is one of the safest sources when it's the least safest source. There is nothing safe about nuclear. La, 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 la. Oh, speaking of, that's the problem with nuclear. We don't, you don't have a story to say, well, hey, that's pretty cool. You'll never have a story where it's always going to be, well, here's a, and every story. We can, it's like a deck of cards. I can put a deck of cards on a table, and you, every card you pick out is going to be a scumbag. So you got just got to pick the scumbags for today in that 24-hour news cycle, and that's what we're doing tonight. There's a 24-hour news cycle of scumbags. You can't cover them all. There's too many each day. And I got to wallow in this excrement, this cesspool each day because I got to read all of it. Uh, that's really something, isn't it? They're gonna build, did you hear they're going to build 300 reactors in the United States in the next 17 years? You better get busy. <coughs> you better stop building everything else. Don't build any more roads. Don't build anything else. Don't build any schools or anything. Well, I'm going to worry about that or hospitals. I'm going to worry about that, I suppose. 
Oliver Stone and um, Goldstein, we've covered Goldstein many times, he says you can put all the nuclear waste in a Coca-Cola can. Yeah, and you put that Coca-Cola, ca if you put a, like a pound in a Coca-Cola can, and you put it at a subway, everybody walked past it would die for millions of years. They're, they're both kind of like, we well, see vamp what the vampires, right? Where that's what both of them reminds me of. So they're at Harvard, Harvard University, and they're doing a pre-screening of Oliver Stone Nuclear Now. Big man hungry, small man tiny. Nuclear now. It debates his merit as a climate change solution. It's uh, again like his job. He'd done something, he got caught at it, and his punishment was he had to come out and beg for nuclear, I guess. Uh, Pre-screening a panel at the Science Center, which was co-written by the batshit lunatic Joshua Goldstein at Harvard uh, campus. Uh, they had uh, Richard Lester, the associate provost at MIT, and the moderator was Daniel Scrag, the director of Harvard Center for the Environment. So if you're going to look to MIT and Harvard to come up with solutions, you're sadly mistaken. All the jobs for solutions have been taken over by the pro-nuclear community, and the only solution they can come up with is nuclear. But they can't produce the nuclear, but they can say the solution is nuclear. <laughs> Since Hollywood mass media entertainment industry may have played some role in turning off an entire generation of nuclear power, may have. This is a conjecture, right? Some role in turning off the entire generation of nuclear power. It seems quite fitting that an icon of Hollywood, which is not an icon at all, is taking an active role in changing public consensus. Because yeah, the consensus is nuclear is disgusting. And the examples are endless. Harvard's Johnston family professor of psychology says, which is Pinker, and we've covered him quite a few times over the years too. We've covered all the Yale, yeah, uh, Harvard, Stanford, Oxford, MIT, etc., etc., uh, lectures and presentations on Fukushima right after it happened. We took them, dissected them, and it was despicable. We're going to do it again soon. I just got to remember to go ahead and do it. It's worth doing again. I got it. I got everything I already collected and chopped up, right? <coughs> we'll do a better job, but I mean, we've done a proficient job every other time. Nuclear now. Nuclear power, it argues, and there is no argument, of course. You can't claim nuclear is clean, safe, and reliable. This is absurdness. And you got Joshua Goldstein, who co-wrote it, so you know it's going to be just complete garbage. The meltdown in Chernobyl, over Three Mile Island, Fukushima led to far fewer casualties than the fatal levels of air pollution produced annually by coal and fossil fuels. And they're going to use uh, the industry's studies, right, to quantify these types of assertions. But... Of course, it, they don't hold up to any kind of scrutiny from a fear panel. They'll get shredded right into the shredder immediately. It argues small amounts of radiation have not been proven to cause health issues. No, they're actually infinitely worse. Imagery of dental offices and x-ray machines across the screen. You got Goldstein uh, there, Joshua Goldstein, rather. They got this crazy lunatic we've covered, uh, Pinker, before from Harvard. I think Pinker's from Harvard. I can't remember. What the hell? Because we've covered him quite a bit. You, d you never forget his face, eh? And what he did, like...
the average professor that we come across is a vicious scumbag. They got the job because they're vicious scumbags. And so it's very dubious what they're doing to your children in your school. From the audience, Hogan, from the audience, the audience, the research director of Harvard Electricity Policy Group said, William Hogan. So that's not an audience, that's a seated question. It gets even worse. From the audience, John Marshall, CEO of the Potential Energy Coalition, also speaking from the audience. So you're quoting the industry, the pro-nuclear community, from the audience. It's no longer an audience, which is what they've done with their uh, presentations about Fukushima, by the way, the same thing. Also speaking from the audience. We are not able to come close to addressing climate change decarbonization goals that have been set for the world without a lot more nuclear power. No, the, the only way to, to stop global warming, and it's not going to be slow long term, is to contain all the emissions from the fuel pools worldwide that are still splitting atoms into the environment and close down all nuclear and actually stop the stuff from hemorrhaging into the environment because it's splitting atoms into the environment. That's, and they know it. I mean, there's no way that they don't know how this works. Look, I'm going to go on by how does nuclear emissions actually work. And when you look at the picture, it's like, holy shit, we're in real trouble. Nuclear now, which shouldn't exist, opens to the public with a limited theatrical release on April 28th. They got all bases covered, right? They got a lot of people pumping for them in the pro scumbag industries. Stone with co writer Joshua Goldscumstein before the Harvard pre screening of his documentary Nuclear Now. How many people get their documentary screened at Harvard, I wonder? Oh, that's right, nobody. What's the benefit of having your documentary screened at Harvard, I wonder? Uh, world events building momentum for nuclear. No, propaganda. This is world nuclear news, by the way. So <laughs> it's like pointless to read it, but we do it just. Why not, right? It's the 24 hour news cycle. Recent geopolitical events have focused world attention on the importance of energy security. They're talking about Russia and the self inflicted inflation, right? And saying that nuclear can play in providing clean, the cosmic moment in the building, both nuclear generation supply chains to support it. So the keynote panelists at the World Nuclear Fuel Cycle 2023 conference in the Netherlands, this is the last day is today, by the way. And so I don't know how they got Sammy, the head of the World Nuclear Association, in Japan and also in the Netherlands, and they got COSAC there too, right? Recent geopolitical events focus world attention and importance of energy security. And the vital role nuclear complaint providing clean. Uh, these, they say it over and over and over, is all I'm trying to assert for you. Has a momentum to build and boat nuclear generation supply chain, which is not true. They're, this is just fantasy, and their fantasy, you can they're getting more desperate, is what we're seeing. Because this is just nonsense. This is a great this is a time of great change for the nuclear industry. Boris Schultz, the CEO of Urentco. Now I listened to him today at the G7, the G5 in Japan, after the G7. That had signed memorandums of understandings to support each other. But they, they all need the same equipment. They can't, if they support anybody else, they can't build their own nuclear. Only one of them can build a nuclear because they're going to run out of everything. They don't have the expertise. They don't have the cranes. They don't have the cement pumps, trucks. They don't have the infrastructure. They don't have 
because they need they can only use the best of the best of the best materials and everything has to be inspected three times it's a very intensive process they they got to get permits they got to have designs they got to have they got to spend a half a billion dollars just leveling out the sites and you know in america that that'll take 300 years to do 300 reactors at the rate that the industry works we all have to become climate activists he says and he's, he's part of a small modular reactor company that has no small modular reactors the war in Ukraine had opened the eyes of the world. Well, there was 59 wars going on at the same time that didn't open anybody's eyes and didn't open anybody's eyes after. The only eyes got opened was the one where NATO was involved, which shouldn't exist, right? NATO shouldn't exist. Say the nuclear industry, and then they actually got the balls to mention the new nuclear reactor that opened up in Finland as some kind of knight in shining armor. It's 14 years behind schedule, for goodness sakes. 14 years. Triple the price. They'll never be able to pay it off. 14 years behind schedule. Because France can't build jack shit, right? And uh, Sama Babo Leon added the third dimension of equality, equality, energy for everybody everywhere. Now, when she says that in the video that I had played a few clips of at the beginning, um, you don't see the conviction in the people that are speaking. There's three and a half three hours 45 minutes three and a half hours and I didn't see that this assertion this conviction this dominance this conviction a single time in any of the speakers it was like a big yawn fist and three and a half hours I'll never get back We've never been in a time like this when Nuclear Energy Institute President CEO Maria Kosnick She's just a skank, eh? She's a disgusting nuke skank. We've gone from can we build it to can we build it fast enough? No, you can't even build it. Where's the examples? Like, you have no examples of to back up that kind of assertion. Nuclear is receiving unprecedented levels of bipartisan support. Yeah, but it's, it's all just paper. There's no support. There's no infrastructure. You're not hiring 80,000 people here and 150,000 there. You're hiring nobody. All your money has to go to administration that you get. Well, 90% of them, more than 200 bills to support or advance nuclear energy are currently before state legislators. Well, they, they gave you a green ticket, a get a jail card for nuclear from the Biden administration, right? And it still didn't do nothing. That's the thing about nuclear, right? You give it whatever it wants, you can't, still won't do nothing. It's like it's stuck in first gear and it doesn't know how to drive. Send the market singles to drive fuel cycle growth. That's an extremely important statement, by the way, the fuel cycle growth. Most nuclear power plants, that's what they're based upon, fuel cycle, because the, the fuel can be used for weapons, right? So most reactors was about the fuel cycle because when you take it out, now you got weapon uh, production material. But it has to go through the fuel cycle for 14, 18 months. And so you hear that connotation a lot and it's very telling when you look at the legacy of the uh, industry. To achieve it, the nuclear industry needs to ensure its diversity and its workforce. It's not going to make any difference. We're going to build and operate all these extra gigawatts. We need to attract the best talent. The best scumbags the money can buy are not going to be building jack shit because they're scumbags. And that's what you've seen happen, right? This is why the industry is flat on its back. It's because they can only hire scumbags. You can't hire really good people. They're not going to hang out. Some of them find a little niches, but the majority are not going to hang out there. It's just too dirty 
the industry is too big of a backstabber. And you got to be a scumbag anyway just to get your foot in the door. And so they're not motivated to do things, right? Which is lucky for us. Well, they're motivated to be evil, unfortunately, but... WNFC 2023 is co-organized by the Nuclear Energy Institute. The World Nuclear Association is taking place in The Hague, where they should be tried for crimes against humanity, the way it seems you already got them there. These, and the two girls are disgusting pigs, eh? They, re they really are disgusting pigs. Nuclear horrors. And anything that comes from the World Nuclear News is scum. They, they're, they're a pro-degenerate nuclear organization lobbying group, but their job is to promote the degenerate nuclear industry nobody else will promote. International Energy Agency, which was taken over by the nuclear industry quite a long time ago, highlights nuclear key role in the coming years. That's not what you do. That's what you got them to do now. You got some new players in key positions claiming they're going to do it, but that's, they can't, that's not their job to do that. In fact, the uh, International Energy Agency said by 2026, from 2020 to 2026, there would be 4,800 gigawatts of renewables online. Um, that's the animosity equivalent of all gas, oil, and coal, and nuclear worldwide combined. And which means everything in gas, oil, and coal is about to become redundant, right? become useless I should say because renewables were ready to now at that stage now nuclear is just getting into second gear itself by 2026 and so last year's number the year before or 2020 and 2021 numbers that we got it's like 600 to 1 600 renewables for every megawatt of uh, nuclear that came online. So it's coming true is what I'm saying to you. Output is expected to grow by 3.6% per year on average between 2023 and 2025. And the good news is that renewable nuclear power are growing quickly enough to meet almost all this additional appetite. But nuclear output declined 4.3% in 2022. So therefore, just all they're doing is sabotaging everybody's future because they're not going to come to fruition. Nuclear leaders issue call for action from the G7. No, no, this was set up before the G7 got there. This wasn't something random. They went there to get all the attention of the world's media for the G7, and then they flipped it to the nuclear industry to try to put them on a pedestal. But that's... They did, but it, it's not much of a pedestal because nobody cares about these people anymore. After generations of constant lies and deceit and dishonesty and blatant robbery of every country that they infiltrate and infest like a parasite, the world is not only weary of them, the world is sick of them. And so it's 100% posturing. You can't show me a single example of their narrative coming to fruition. You can't. You can't show it. It doesn't exist. And I, I do this seven days a week, 365 days a year, and I do it year after year after year. And if I can't find the evidence, there's literally nobody can find it. I can guarantee you. I'm not in this because it's fun. I'm in this because i got so much hate for this industry. This is a filthy scumbag industry. The World Degenerate Association, the Nuclear Tart Association from Canada, Japan, Europe, the UK, and the USA that has the credibility of a fruit fly have issued a declaration calling on G7 government to support long-term operations, existing disease factories, and accelerate the deployment of new degenerate nuclear power plants. Well, you, you, can, you can agree to it, but it's not going to happen. They're old, decrepit, the gamma shines, the x-rays, the neutron bombardments have solidified their demise. The declaration was issued at the Nuclear Energy Forum held in Japan at the same time. 
It was signed by leaders of the World Degenerate Association, the Canadian Degenerate Association, the Japan's Atomic Degenerate Industry Forum, Nuclear Scumbag Europe, Nuclear Monsters Energy Institute of the USA, the UK, the Nuclear Industries Association, watched by ministers from the G7 and the mass media that got tricked and deceived and manipulated into hoodwinking the entire planet. To support decarbonization at the scale required, the international community must work to extend the operating period of existing nuclear generation resources. Well, you can't decarbonize when you're using something that at best has 10% of the energy worldwide. What about the other 90%? Does that matter? So saying that even if it was true that it could decarbonize and that carbon was the issue, which of course is not, nuclear is the issue. Carbon doesn't pulse energy every second and invisible plumes covering the entire planet. Nuclear does. And nuclear produces a new plume every single day. Carbon never does. As far as carbon's going is because it's such big particles, uh, 50 to 100 miles in heavy wind, and it's going to land, get absorbed back into the earth because it's natural. That's where it came from in the first place. And help grow trees and plants and fungus and bacteria and ecosystems, animals and everything else. Nothing can exist without carbon. Low carbon electricity. So they just keep regurgitating it over and over and over. And as long as a section of the population gets complacent and brainwashed, that's acceptable for them, right? They're not trying to win it. They're just trying to not come up with solutions. And thereby, from a compact footprint which reduces habitat and biodiversity loss, like, that's all nuclear does is is destroy biodiversity, destroy the habitat, destroys the fungus, the bacteria, your forest, your ecosystem, ends up breaking down. <coughs> the nuclear energy was selected for the first industrial forum of its kind ever to be held in conjunction with the degenerate G7 ministerial meetings where they got a bunch of people get together in a foreign country make decisions that impact everybody in the country without the consent or without a referendum. It's the ultimate in how stupid can we be. And because they've been doing it now for so long, now they think it's normal. Now they feel entitled. Now, now it's... Um, they feel obligated to destroy everybody and everything. Because that's what they get, that's what the only way they can get that particular job if they're willing to do what they're told, and this is what they're told. Promote nuclear. Nuclear phaser would increase pollution deaths, says the study, from MIT, which is promoting nuclear for 90 years. It's nuclear that is causing the, the die-offs, the cardiac problems, the heart problems, the liver and the lung, the respiratory the pituitary thyroid, the adrenaline, the Alzheimer's, dementia, the autism, the diabetes, the Down syndromes, the schizophrenia. This is real. Not carbon. If the U.S. were to shut down its nuclear disease factories that are all surrounded by farms, only something good can come of it, right? International Atomic Energy Agency launches a Global Water Resources Initiative, right? And so this is just a subsidy of UN, the Military Industrial Complex UN, United Nations, which is what Eisenhower called them, right? George Bush Sr. called them New World Order, and, and that's exactly what they are. So the, I, the IAEA was supposed to be a regulatory for nuclear, theoretically, right? But it's not. It's the total opposite, right? It's its job is to direct you away from all the evilness. And in nuclear, there's enough to go around of evilness, we notice. World nuclear news never takes a break, do they? Nuclear partially included in EU net zero industry act. 
Nuclear partially included in the EU Net Zero Industry Act. Nuclear has got nothing to do with um, renewables. And so we covered this when the, P the EU Parliament voted 515 to 525 or something, rather was in favor of putting it as uh, green technology, right? And they created the, the taxonomy in the EU to promote good things. And the first thing they promoted was nuclear, called it something that it can never be, right? Which is, you know, no energy source really is going to be neutral, you know, obviously. But don't try to tell them that, apparently. And and another thing you always got to remember, whenever you see the word world nuclear news, you know this is going to be nothing but propaganda. They're never going to have the author's name on it, and it's going to be 100% propaganda every single time. The Net Zero Industry Act, making the EU the home of clean tech industries. Just because you call it net um, renewable doesn't mean it's renewable. That's why the world is starting to hate your guts. You, you left them no choice, right? And and they'll they'll drive it into anybody's brains to try to read this net zero, which was a paper by Alan Miles, who got a cushy job at Cambridge. And Carbon Free was by um, was a big advertisement campaign by BP Oil to blame you for their accidents. And then the United Nations took that and weaponized it against you. And so you had Net Zero, you had Carbon Free, you had James Hansen who created the word carbon, f carbon in the first place. Uh, might as well go find it. We brought it up so many times, but I don't show it to you now. The trolls be there. Well, why didn't he show it to you? He shows you everything else because he's lying. That's why. Okay, trolls, give me a second. I'll get it. I'm gonna do it just for you, though. Yeah. I had no choice. I had to do it. I don't see Miles Allen there. Where the hell did Miles Allen go? Hang on. Where are you two Miles? I don't know what I got down there. That's pretty weird. Let's tell this much anyway. So there was um, the father of global warming, which is uh, Wallace Brocker. We had uh, the brief history of the carbon footprint, which was BP oil, a campaign intended to divert attention from the fossil fuel industry on individual consumers. It was a massive campaign, and the United Nations jumped on that. Then you have Hansen, who we started off the show with, by the way. Uh, adjunct professor, no less. Not even a real professor. And best known for his research in climatology in 1988 congressional testimony on climate change that helped raise broad awareness of global warming. So you had the father, he's the father of global warming. He's the father, I'm sorry, he's the father of global warming. He's the father of climate change. BP oil is the father of net zero or carbon footprint. And Miles Allen, who's missing from my lineup for some reason. He got moved accidentally when I was That's a little disappointing. You should be there. Well, just because he's supposed to be there, don't mean he's there, Dana. Roger that. I'll just see if I can find it because 
That's supposed to be right there. I'm afraid to type certain keywords into my computer search engine like so I have certain folders where I can get away with it but because I've been doing it for so long I'll get the telephone book whenever I put in uh, putting carbon I can't remember what search term I supposed to use yeah I'm not gonna find it I guess if I scan everything I'll find it I put in climate I'm a sucker for punishment. Oh, well, what's the odds? I found it. Let's try it again, I suppose. We just got one more to cover, right? Which was Miles Allen. So now it makes sense, right? So you got Miles Allen was the physicist behind Net Zero. You got Brockner was the grandfather of global warming. You had Hansen was the grandfather of climate change. And BP Oil was the carbon footprint. And so that's the four entities that you're using to wreck the planet. And it was just these four individual people that done papers, right? And then that was weaponized by the degenerate United Nations. Each of those in increments as they showed up. And so you had net zero, carbon free, global warming, climate change, and whatever. So it was just these four entities that created them and the United Nations said, we'll use that and blame everybody for their tin cans, their pop bottles, and their cardboard instead of the military industrial complex and uh, the industries, nuclear and everything else that is actually doing it to us. Geothermal energy, the forgotten renewable, was conveniently forgotten. We, we actually got geothermal, it exists, it's easy to do. You don't need no uh, fancy licenses, you don't have to go. Should geothermal energy that actually exists Should geothermal energy that actually exists be considered before non-existent small modular reactors? We almost got twice as many votes as we do people. Which is typical when I cover hard-hitting stuff like we've done tonight so far, right? They'll censor me down. Because they don't want people to say, well, what's, that looks interesting. They want to say, oh, nobody's watching his show. Why should we watch it, right? But usually anybody that's going to watch this show are really, really, really good people, intelligent people, and uh, can't handle the propaganda, and they come seeking documentation and facts, right? A little bit of Dana in between. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to have a Dana in the equation, apparently. This is where nuclear can deliver the solution needed. Well, first off, it's coming from the World Nuclear News. UK urged to be the world leader in nuclear derived synthetic fuel. So, this is where they use nuclear, they want to use nuclear reactors to make hydrogen without a hydrogen economy to back it up, right? <coughs> Again, right? It's. It's just unbelievable desperation. It's 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 a hundred percent conjecture the whole time. That's what they throw your way, and so they don't give you anything that's real. They don't have anything tangible, 
And so the world can't gravitate to the nuclear industry because they don't have anything that's tangible. They have just... Uh, since Fukushima, the propaganda is uh, it's really special how evil they actually are. It's very clear now, see? And the desperation is what we see almost every single day. It's really evident, this desperation. Can, and so this is desperation. Again, can nuclear energy save the Earth? So what do you think they're suggesting when they say stuff like that? What do you think they're trying to, like, convey to the random viewers? They're trying try to make the random, by proxy, think nuclear, the Earth is dying because of nuclear. We're not trying to acknowledge that. They're trying to deny that nuclear had a hand in it. You can't deny nuclear is evil once you start looking at it. <coughs> no nuclear. So this is the third day we've covered her. Miss America argues nuclear energy is another top choice. She's been promoting all across the country in her role as Miss America. So because she was a nuclear student, they gave her the Miss. There was a lot better, prettier girls there. Because she was a nuclear student, they got her to the Miss World, or Miss Wisconsin, then Miss America. And now they're using her to promote nuclear. And it just is never going to work, see? Because th the first day that we covered it, she was talking about equating nuclear with bananas, which is a 100% no-no when it comes to me. You are got a great big target on your forehead for the rest of your life when I hear you mention bananas and nuclear in the same sentence. It's the, it's the one of, And this is a nuclear student, for goodness sakes. It's a despicable betrayal to say something like that. It's a hideous, monstrous personality would try to conflate the two. Geothermal energy market worth nine billion by twenty twenty seven, nine thousand four hundred million, nine point four billion by twenty twenty seven, just in the next couple of years. They they expect uh, in the next short while they'll spend fifty billion on bits for drilling, just the bits. Which means, if you're gonna if you're gonna blow fifty billion on bits, you're talking about a lot of geothermal. So neo geo uh, geothermal is the solution. Nano nuclear energy signs strategic partnership project agreement with Idaho National Laboratory, which is another uh, a zero industry, right? That creates nothing but diseases and misery. For the micro reactor design, the Zeus's, they got an expert panel review for something that don't exist. And the Zeus's micro reactor, well, why do micro reactor when you can do geothermal for half the price or less? Why would you do nuclear? How? Where's the cost benefits? There is none, right? And there is no micro reactor, so why wouldn't you do geothermal? Get it done, move on to the next project. Why are you going to put all your eggs in a basket with a bunch of holes in it? The unnamed Virginia coal plant that Department of Energy flagged as a possible nuclear reactor site. So now, since Quasi Electric, which is going to do geothermal, repurpose gas, oil, and coal plants into geothermal, nuclear's like, we can do that too. And so now nuclear is trying to pretend that's their idea. Again, it'll never work. Burning Man cheers countries overturning geothermal permits. Uh, Burning Man, you get like 80,000 partiers that leave a great big stupid mess behind. And they overturned wonderful geothermal permits 
is really something. And so all of a sudden now I hate Burning Man with a passion. Country commissioners have rescinded an energy company's permit to drill exploratory wells for geothermal in the desert. The best spot possible, right? Well, we can't have that. That'll, that'll take off. It'll be really good. Near the site of the annual Burning Man Countercultural Festival that they have for a couple of days each year, then destroy geothermal plants in a perfect place like a desert. That's a perfect spot for geothermal, right? It's 177 kilometers north of Reno. Officials for the Burning Man organization and others who have filed suit in the U.S. District Court to block Omar Technology Court Exploration of Black Rock Desert say the move puts the project on hold indefinitely and could scuttle it altogether. Interesting choice of words. Opponents of the project said it could jeopardize the town's water supply and detract from the remote area's natural beauty. Like, what are you talking about, man? Let me go back to a story. Tense alcohol and food. Town complains of trash left by Burning Man attendees. Large amounts of rubbish dumped by the festival goers in Lake Tahoe and Reno irks the locals. There's like 80,000 people shitting in the desert. Burning Man brings nothing to Pershing County except for heartaches. They illegally dumped their trash in the area. And setting fire to the artwork creates atmospheric pollutions at the Burning Man festivals too, right? Because you burn it all after. They're all drunk, high on all kinds of peyote and everything else. But somebody wants to do something decent and get rid of all the pollution and they object so they, they can have a party place for three days a year, four days a year. Nuclear training program for U.S. and Canada. Like, you're going to have to hire millions of people to build 300 reactors, large reactors, in the next 17 years. you got to start hiring tomorrow morning when you wake up. you got to get them educated. It'll never happen, right? The unnamed Virginia Coal Plant Department of Energy flagged as a possible nuclear reactor site. Back to that story. Dominion Energy wants a small modular reactor built somewhere in Virginia. Well, first off, you got to design it. You got to get the kinks out of it. You got to re-engineer it. Then you got to build it. You got to get through administration. You got to get through the regulatory agencies, despite the fact they're captured. You still got to get through. You still got to go through a million pieces of paper. You got to do all the legwork. You got to do site selection. You got to you got to make the site proper. You got to come up with something that works. Then you got to get the kinks out of that. So 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, you'll have a, a reactor that you can start producing. Long, 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 long after renewables dominate the entire planet is what you're talking about. So you're talking about stopping us from coming up from solutions by promoting reactors of any design, let alone the fabled unicorn small modular reactor. And so you're talking about young skin. We covered him quite a bit in the last six, seven months. He revealed his energy plan in October and made a big deal about small modular reactors that don't exist. So then the question is, why not use geothermal? Because they exist, you know? They actually exist already. So should geothermal energy that actually exists be considered before the non-existent Unicorn small modular reactors. Well, of course you should, Dana. I'm just asking. Bill in North Carolina legislator legislator would legislature legislator would define nuclear as a source of clean energy. I'm stuttering because that caught me off guard. Even when I was I picked it up today and read it, I was like, wait, what? They're doing what? They're going to define nuclear as source of clean energy. A big disease factory is now going to be called clean energy in the United States. Nuclear is going to play, have to play, an absent some revolutionary innovation in the field of energy. 
absent. Do you got any idea how many innovations are out there? Did I mention geothermal? A company aims to power the world for millions of years with the energy under your feet. There's two there's a billion times energy under your feet than you use already on the entire planet for everybody. Repurpose coal and gas plants into deep geothermal wells, effectively transforming dirty fossil fuel plants into clean ones. The technology is obsolete. So to claim that you don't have any technology to replace nuclear when that's, you got tons of it. It's everywhere. A really tiny footprint, not that that matters. You gotta power millions of homes. And they're trying to use, never mind. On to the next crazies. The bill has gone advanced through the State Agricultural Energy Environment Committee. So how are they supposed to be in charge of nuclear? Would change statutory language from renewable to clean energy. So they're going to get rid of the word renewable and call it clean. That way they can uh, invoke nuclear. And would add nuclear facilities to the category along with wind and solar. But they got nothing to do with each other. There's complete opposites. And if you put storage with uh, wind and solar, you don't need gas, oil, or coal, or nuclear anymore. Canada had 700 farms uh, in Ontario, 700 solar and wind farms, and then they closed them all last year. There was $4.2 billion for storage for renewables, and because there's no more renewables because they closed it all, they took the $4.2 billion, which would have set renewable free for storage, and gave it to Bruce Power, which is going to build storage. There's not a single wind farm or solar farm on the planet that has storage, and there's 20 different options for storage. You know why they, why they don't? Because the minute they do, nuclear can't even open their mouth ever again, see? And neither can gas, oil, and cold. They scuttled your future. They destroyed your future. They stole your future from your loved ones and your friends and your families and the species. That's what nuclear's legacy is. They stole everybody's future and then they poisoned the ecosystem for a billion years. The oceans, the fresh water, the forest. At what point should we say this is enough? Because I reached that point a long time ago. Memorandum of Understanding sees Curie, Alberta Corporation, this is a North Korean, South Korean degenerate nuclear company, the South Koreans Atomic Energy Research Institute has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the government of Alberta to collaborate in deployment of small modular reactors. They don't have a license. They don't have a um, design of the reactors they're talking about. How are they going to do it? Why we, why we, why are we talking about it? Because we're not coming up with solutions by pretending we're going to have small modular reactors. That's not a solution because there is no small modular reactors. A solution would be like geothermal, which is a solution for everybody everywhere. It's half the price of nuclear, and nuclear will always, when it's finished, will always be three times more expensive again, right? And so you should have, you should be upset that the nuclear industry is doing that constantly, that it, they're, right, they're denying everybody a future by pretending that small modular reactors are a solution when obviously they're, they don't exist, they can't be a solution. It's a, ver it's a very dangerous thing we're doing. We've been doing it for quite a few years in a row. Are we just going to keep pretending? Right, so they get some idiot from South Korea standing with a, a 
smiling for the camera and now everything is hunky dory, but it's not. They don't you can't go build small modular reactors in South Korea first and then come talk to Canada, okay? How come you're not doing that? Well that's right, because you got no small modular reactors. Terrestrial energy molten salt small modular reactor passes Canadian vendor design review. Yeah, but they don't have the whole design in. So why are we looking at small modular reactors that don't exist when geothermal energy actually is obsolete? The technology is off the shelf. It's everywhere. It's under everybody's feet, no matter where you till. You just got to drill deep enough and tap into it. It's 100% renewable. You don't need no storage. It's cheap as shit compared to everything else, for goodness sakes. And it's the ultimate solution you're going to do anyway. So why not do it now? Let me see. So this is their fabled design, again, right? You always have these weird, stupid, useless designs, these caricatures of what they're going to build, instead of an app, you know, a design by a real engineering company saying, this is it here. NATO could consider a nuclear deployment of its own to counter Russia. Well, they're... UK is sending in depleted uranium munitions, right? Dirty bombs. These are dirty bombs. They're pyroplastic. To catch fire as they're going through the air, they've already gone through a chain reaction. If I take one of them bullets and throw it into your water system, that makes me a terrorist. If I take one of those bullets and blow it up in your community, that's a dirty bomb. If they fire tens of thousands in your community, they're called the heroes. Putin also said 10 Belarusian combat aircrafts have been configured to carry nuclear weapons. But a wary Kremlin might worry that NATO has dense air defenses and that a disloyal Belarusian pilot could bomb Russia. Again, what is like? It's a big joke, you know? That's what it is to these people. UK report shows promises 100% clean energy without nuclear power. Think about that statement. 100% clean energy without nuclear power. If you use geothermal, no matter where you're to, that's the solution, see? You should say, well, we can't use geothermal. Maybe we'll look at something else, but never nuclear. Why would you look at nuclear, the most expensive, time-consuming, toxic, regulatory-intensive idiot machine on the planet? <sighs> scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. What did I just... Let me try this again. Oh, yeah, UK report promised 100% clean energy without nuclear power. Do you want to look at it? No, we've got to have uh, n small modular reactors. And then Rolls-Royce small modular reactors are 500 uh, megawatts. They're almost as big as a small large reactor, so-called large reactor. They're half the size of a large reactor. This is not small, these are not modular reactors, but they're calling it small modular reactors. They're even doing it today in that G5 presentation they posted live stream to YouTube four days ago. Norton introduces bill requiring dismantling of nuclear weapons. This is a congresswoman. Uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton introduced the Nuclear Weapons uh, Abolition and Conversion Act of 2023 today. Bless her heart. Way to go. You go. Awesome. 
Extremely surprising nuclear physicists have a groundbreaking observation of strange matter. And protons or electrons and positrons come in contact with each other, they annihilate each other, and they turn into pure radiation. And vice versa, right? And so strange matter, right, because you're into quantum physics, suggests the building blocks of the protons, the quarks, the gluons, the gluons can sometimes march through the nucleus of the atom in pairs referred to as diquarks. Experiment was carried out at the Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator Facility, which is run by the U.S. Department of Energy, but they got one of these now in uh, Brookhaven. As if Brookhaven hasn't already suffered enough, or the people of around Brookhaven haven't already suffered enough. Unlike protons and neutrons, which only contain a mixture of up and down quarks, Lambus contains uh, one up quark, one down quark, one strange quark. The physicists Physicists have dubbed the matter that contains strange quarks as strange matter. Whoop you do. The upcoming electron ion collider at the Department of Energy's Brookhaven National Laboratory. So they're gonna have one now at these at the Brookhaven National Laboratory. They got thousands and thousands of people living around this got cancer. They have a minute that they poisoned the aquifer underneath it because all of these national laboratories are built on the biggest aquifers in that part of the country and all of them are incredibly radioactive because of the meltdowns that go unreported. Illinois clean energy advocates rally against nuclear power in Springfield. You know Springfield where uh, Homer Simpson was to according to the British environment the net zero climate change minister was saying at the beginning of the show, remember that? The plan was to switch to solar and wind energy. But lawmakers consider lifting the ban on new nuclear power after capacity issues this summer because they don't have storage. You're not allowed to have storage. Only nuclear can have storage like Bruce Power in Canada. Renewable can't have it. The minute renewable has storage, it's boy boy nuclear, boy boy gas, oil and coal, right? Immediately, everybody will wake up. But right now, they say, well, the wind don't blow, the sun don't shine, got to have nuclear. And so they're scuttling everybody's future by throttling storage. And there's 20 different storage solutions. All of them are awesome. It is a, and all of them can do the job. They, no one's allowed to have them because they compete with everything else, right? It is a proposal that these advocates are strongly against. Nuclear is going to take a long time to put on the grid, and wind and solar can go tomorrow, but you got to have storage. And this is where we run into the problem, because they, they fund that, but they won't fund the storage, because that's a death sentence for any competition, right? Scumbag Floor signs a memorandum of understanding with Longview Fusion Energy System. They're such a scumbag company, eh? They're massive. They're worldwide on top of that. I can't remember, like 150,000 employees or something. But but they're just misery machines, disease factories. The technical base is leveraging billions of dollars invested in indirect drive inertia fusion. But they haven't spent a nickel on geothermal. All the universities have nuclear um, dedicated academics and professors and classrooms. None of them have geothermal. So geothermal energy that actually exists is cheaper, cleaner, can do the job much better, it's unbelievably reliable for millions of years, be considered before the non-existent small modular reactor unicorns.
Duh. Dean, of course you should. I'm just asking the question. Maybe I wasn't nice, so I'll be nice the next time I ask. So my apologies. The U.S. Lawrence Livermore Disease Factory has described the National Ignition fact Facility Ignition experiment. Well, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory is a weapons manufacturer, not a civilian manufacturing facility. So anything, any breakthrough they've got is strictly about weapons. I'm just saying. Hello. The greatest hoodwink in human history is the nuclear industry. And they're gone into overdrive for the last couple of years in particular. Hints of a super massive black hole mergers in nuclear star clusters. Only the simulation of both nuclear star clusters hosting a central super massive black hole will produce in a super massive black hole binary. But again, these are conjectures, these are opinions. They can't quantify that assertion, right? Because then you're talking about one to two million years for the mergers. So why are we wasting our time on that? Take these scientists, put them work on geothermal, and we got solutions, right? Take these particle physicists that are wasting their time on stuff that has no benefit to humanity, put them to work on geothermal and stuff like that. Because these are really smart people. But you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna take these, lock them away, use them for military purposes, and you really think you're gonna have a future for your your children, your loved ones, the species. But remember we're the stewards of this planet. What about all the other species? When do they get a say in the equation? Still fighting over Einstein theories on top of that. They spent trillions of dollars on that, but they won't spend a nickel on geothermal. Can't pay for nuclear disarmament to take to St. Albans streets. So they're going to start their protest to raise awareness of the cost of the British nuclear weapons. And they're talking about $205 billion just to replace the Trident nuclear missiles, right? $205 billion is the same sum of money you would spend if you wanted to switch Britain over to geothermal. So if you don't spend the money on nuclear weapons, you can switch the whole country over on cheap, clean British uh, geothermal. But you can't because the nuclear industry wants to steal every nickel that you can come up with and use it for their own um, wages, right? And they're not going to have a nuclear war because then you can't cash a check anymore. And between them, Britain, the U.S., France, Russia, and China have 36,000 nuclear weapons. If you took the money, then geothermal, problem over, and everybody might have a future. But because you refuse to be humans, speaking of refusing to be humans, Dungeness Nuclear Power Station, future plan reveal an action plan by Folkestone and the High District Council and Kent Council County Council. The exciting next steps towards securing new nuclear energy at a power station have been revealed by the council bosses. Guess what they want to do? Small modular reactors from Rolls-Royce. Well, Rolls-Royce, the design they're talking about is 500 megawatts. This is not small, it's not modular. So stop calling it small modular, at least do that much. At least have the courage to call it what it is, a nuclear power plant. But that's what the nuclear industry lacks. It lacks courage. It lacks leadership, right? It, the people that they got leading it, like Kozak and uh, Sammy, Sama, these are not leaders. These are useful idiots. 
How the councils of our, they're, they're smart, but they're still idiots because otherwise the industry would have took off. How the councils have already discussed with small modular reactor provider Rolls-Royce. Oh, and advanced modular reactor provider EDF. Uh, I don't know how to break this to you, but EDF and Rolls-Royce don't have small modular reactors and they're not leaders in it because they don't have it. And then the the useless, the absolute useless nuclear industry authority. I don't even know why they created that in Britain for the nuclear industry authority. They, they have no authority and they're, we have seen them do nothing since they've been existed on the take paychecks. So the idea is to encourage the government to allow small modular reactors to be fitted on one of the sites to be built at Dungeness, but they don't exist for God's sakes. So you're putting all your eggs in an empty a basket with uh, no bottom in it. Energy exports lead to more climate pollution in East Coast Province, September Canada. New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. And then next week, the neighbor of New Brunswick is what they were talking about, Nova Scotia government handed the maximum possible fine to its privately owned electric utility for missing a renewable energy target. And it's Canada. Canada is completely owned by the nuclear industry, right? And so they got a $10 million fine, which is nothing to them. It means nothing to them. It's like sending your employee home an hour before quitting time. It means nothing to them. The province's nuclear plant experienced only a few planned shutdowns. However, that's well. First off, that statement, first statement, is not true. In 2022, the plant is longer planned and unplanned shutdown. There's like five billion dollars in debt already, prompting the grid to take more power from the coal-fired fired uh, Billy Dune generating station and that one in Nova Scotia releases 14 million trillion becquels of tritium 3H, the anthropogenic man-made, each year legally, which is equal to all the reactors in Europe and the United States and France combined releases in just that single reactor. And you can't, it can't just be tritium. And they're legally allowed to do it. Legally allowed to murder you with radioactive follow because nobody's resist, nobody's been able to, well, there is no fun functional uh, resistance, right? Like Greenpeace is captured, for instance, what I'm saying, right? Follow fans can return to the Commonwealth in the winter of Adam campaign book, this was pretty disturbing. So this is based on games, and they got a book coming out. Wait till you get a load of this. Uh, Children of atoms, man-made nuclear atoms. That's what that's about. Children of atoms. I went to the Children of Atoms immediately because they always been one of my favorite groups. Says the lead designer of Winter of Atoms. Frey. That was really disturbing, by the way. The children of Adams use a lot of Christian imagery and feel the most like a current day religion in the world of fallout, but they worship nuclear energy and radiation. So you got the children of Adams work worshiping nuclear energy and radiation. My contempt is almost, I'm almost ready to scream when I read that today. They worship nuclear energy and radiation. Now, how did he become such a scumbag to write something like that, I wonder? Who in the nuclear industry got hold of him? Because nobody's going to come out and come up with that on their own. That's nuclear stuff. Like the antagonist, last son of Adam, the last son, the last son of Adam, was aggressively seeking to convert those to their cause via doses of radiation. I don't know if it's good or bad anymore. Hopefully it scares the children from nuclear, but 
These are very influential games we're talking about. Fallout 3, New Vegas, and Fallout 4. Ocean Sanctuary Act could stop Pilgrim release. Well, it, they've been releasing every day for 60 years. And from the fuel pool, right? Balls off about 120,000 liters a day. So Holtec, which bought it, needs to make a profit. And the only way they can make a profit is dumping everything that's left, right? It's just... For 60 years every day, they balled off 120,000 liters of water. Each liter was trillions of isotopes into the ocean and the environment. Never said nothing. Now the very last bit left in the fuel pool, they want to dump it. You want to change the language of the law. The company applied for a modification of its waste wastewater discharge permit that would allow it to treat the water for non-radioactive contaminants. So Holtec is refusing to acknowledge that the water is radioactive. And obviously this is desperation to, to frame it that way. Because people are paying attention for the first time, see? And they got other nuclear power plants, see? So they, they can't admit that there's radioactive water. Uranium ammo being sent to the Ukraine from the United Kingdom. The Americans had to dispose of 36 million rounds of DU a few years ago. I don't know how I had to dispose of it, but it was the cheapest bidder. So they probably just dumped it in the local landfills. So this story keeps popping up in the last couple of weeks because... UK is sending depleted munitions, not not sending what I already sent and continue to send for the Challenger tanks that they sent down. These are dirty bombs. Each one of these are dirty bombs. And so they came up with a new excuse this time, this war. Now they're saying there's no nuclear components and, and they're forgetting about everything else and just talking about this is not a nuclear bomb, this is nuclear bullets. No, these are dirty bombs. And so they're trying to talk about, well, there's no nuclear components like a nuclear weapon, so right, the, the objections are not realistic. And this is what I mean. The, the industry has so many scumbags that they got a big hat with a billion names into it. They just pop out a name, and the scumbag will come out and lie for them. That's what a journalist's job is to do, right, is to lie. There's no such thing as a journalist, obviously. They said there's little no actual evidence that harm caused by the use of depleted uranium. In Basra, 85% of the babies born after the war in Iraq, 85% of the babies were deformed. Women won't have babies there anymore because the British use so much depleted uranium. It's revolting that somebody would say there's no evidence. It's inconceivable that somebody would say there's no evidence. It's unimaginable that somebody could be that evil and, and that degenerate they would say that there's no adverse, any adverse side effects and there's no evidence. Uh, you know, besides James Hansen and a million others that we covered over the last decade. Ah, uh, it never stops. There's enough scumbags to go around is the only thing we learned about nuclear. There's more than enough scumbags. Should geothermal energy that actually exists be considered before non-existent small modular reactors? Gee, that's an interesting question, Dan. I never thought about that. We got 42%. There are 42 votes. 98% said... Duh, of course, Dana. Give us a hard question for a change. I know it's the last show of the week. I want to go easy on you. It's been a tough week because we've done um, we done a uh, news cycle, 24-hour news cycle, five days this week. 
It's like lifting weights all day, right? That's what these types of shows are actually like. You, you, you're talking 24-hour news cycle, probably 90 stories i got to get through, or 100, and then pick out the top stories because you can't cover everything. That'll take five or six hours each night. It takes 10 hours to put the show together each day, right? Then it takes me roughly two hours to do the show. At the end of the day, it's 10 p.m. when I start, and right now it's almost midnight. My show is usually in around midnight, my time. Because the last thing I like to do each day is beat my head into a wall and do two hours on nuclear. <laughs> it's like running your head into a wall six or seven times before you go to bed at night. As fast as you can on a motorcycle. Ah, yes. Good old nuclear. I gotta play that, um... Crazy, batshit lunatic, uh, Homer Simpson. This is United Kingdom Minister for Climate Change and Net Zero. But I want to end by quoting the world's most famous <laughs> nuclear power plant worker, Homer Simpson. <laughs> that, that is outrageous. That is outrageous that he would do that. So it means that they're not serious, right? And, but it does show you how Simpsons is used as a weapon against your children and yourselves and your loved ones and your friends and your families, right? Simpsons, under normal circumstances, should never exist in that capacity. And so every time people hear about something stupid in a nuclear power plant, they make a stupid Simpson joke, right? And blow it off. Just, or to make a Spider-Man joke or a Hulk joke. All of these were created by the nuclear industry. To do exactly that to you and your loved ones. To make you complacent. But that's a whole different level of stupid. They're stupid and then there's people like that. Yeah. Well, that was a tough week. My goodness, that was a tough week. It all starts again, don't it? Um, Sunday. Let's close the poll down, I guess, before we call it a night. Maybe I'll do a shout-out. Yeah, let's do a shout-out while we're at it. Nuclear for dummies. Should geothermal energy that actually exists be considered... Let me fix that. Apologies. Should geothermal energy that actually exists be considered before non-existent small modular reactors in the energy equation? Is that, am I being stupid or is that silly? Dana, stop being silly, Dana. I don't know, I'm just trying to have a conversation. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. Dad would say something like that. Blue Jay, Outpost, Kevin Blanche, hi Kevin. Yeah, it's a fairy tale cartoon world the nuclear energy freaks live in. Well said, Kevin. James Lucid, hi James. Port Angeles. Thank you, James. Bless your heart, my friend. And uh, we appreciate your positive energy all the time, too, by the way. Diane Sunshine, Patrick, Albert, not Gordian. Let me do a quick sh or a whole shout out. I know Stephen Young was out there last night. I don't know if he's here tonight. I'm going to scroll up through the comments, but hugs for Stephen out there. Where are you to, my friend? 239 Joint Hugs for Joe. Joe's been around a long time. I'm just looking for people to do a show to run up through the comments. And if I miss anybody, 
Get you next time a bit. Let me go up and come back down. Jack Tripper, Stephen Young, he was here. He's probably still here, but he's he was here earlier. Hugs for Stephen. I know how much work it takes for Stephen to type. He's not very healthy, right? Angel's Place. I know Colette was seen last night when I was reading the comments. Colette was... She's either watching or watching later. Graham. And everybody that I miss, my apologies. Can't remember everybody, right? And I'm just burning, flashing down through the names and randomly shouting out anything, any name that looks like I didn't shout out. <coughs> We'll go down to the most recent comments in a moment. Uh, Peace Wear, Don Vincent. I always miss somebody because I'll, I'll go through the all comments after and I'm like, shit, I never called them out. How did I ever miss this one? Because they comment multiple times. And it actually happens, right? Because you got a whole lot going on at the one time. You just ran yourself into the dirt for five days. You got a couple of days to recover. And anybody knows anything about me is I'm hard at it. The minute this is over, I'm back at it. Getting ready for Sunday. Uh, John Curtis. We're almost through. Just another moment, we'll be down to the most recent comments. We'll come down to the most recent comments right now, get it done. The inversion effect. Joe, 239 joint. Dana Nassana, I missed Dana for goodness sakes. <laughs> I almost missed Dana Nassana, believe that one. Hi, Dana. Okay, looks like a cut up to everybody. Yeah, that was a great. That was a great show tonight. That's some serious. Last couple of weeks, some serious censorship. It's probably got something to do with the stories. We cover the best stories each day. And we don't play games, and we're honest, right? And the industry can handle any criticism, which shows you how fragile it actually is, how useless and how unstable it is, because it can't even handle criticism because it doesn't have any rebuttals, right? It can't come up and say, well, Dana was wrong about this, or Dana was wrong about that. Organic slant. Richard McCann. I got everybody. Okay, well, let's close it down. Because otherwise I'll sit here and start talking about shit. Um, let you guys get on with your day, night, wherever you may be. It's after midnight for me. So I'm... I'm officially off for the next couple of days unless they have an earthquake in Japan. We're expecting an earthquake. There are people... You're overdue for a massive earthquake right off the nuclear power plant, 30 kilometers off that coastline. Every year around this time, they have a massive earthquake that does billions of damage everywhere but at ground zero, apparently. <sighs> Stephen Sendell, thank you. Yeah, we got everybody. Good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night. Have a great day tomorrow. Have a great weekend. We'll see everybody on Sunday show unless there's something important happens in the next uh, few days. You know me, I'm up to going to be up to something. We're waiting for a battery to come in for the bike. 
And I, I don't show up tomorrow, I won't get it till at least Monday or Tuesday. And it's going to be what it's going to be. We'll see everybody on Sunday regardless. Have a great night, folks. And if you made it this far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Take care. by quoting the world's most famous nuclear power plant worker, Homer Simpson. TV's Homer Simpson, you know the guy I'm talking, yellow bloke, right? Homer liked to say, Homer Simpson liked to say that he was on a mission for fission.